Our judges are going to take their seats, and I'll introduce you to, um, again, our fourth finalist today is Entrepreneurial Challenge is from WildFit. Um, they will have 15 minutes to present, followed by a short question and answer period. Let me just give you a little bit of an overview of WildFit, Jim. This is an outdoor fitness equipment concept featuring website. They've got mobile app integration. Uh, they're going to tell you a whole lot more about that, and they'll have a little unveiling as well. Please welcome uh, Dan, David, and Desmond from WildFit. I live across the street from City Park in Fort Collins, and every day I ride my bike past the park to get to class. I noticed these blue structures around the perimeter of the park. I counted 10 of them but I never saw anyone using them. So I went up and I took a closer look. And what I saw were that they were these fitness stations, but they were recommending exercises like knee holds, uh, leg lifts, and calf stretches. And I thought to myself, no wonder these never get used. They're based on a completely outdated concept of fitness, and there's nothing motivating users to interact. So I knew that we can make them better, and Wild Fit Gyms was born. My name is David Hunt. I'm co-founder and CEO. I'm an MBA candidate at Colorado State University, and I've launched two successful businesses in Africa that are still profitable today. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Vincent. I'm co-founder and president of Wild Fit Gyms. I graduated from Georgetown University with a degree in human science, um, and I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist, and I'm currently a CrossFit coach. Hi, I'm Desmond Yap. I'm the CTO of WildFit Gyms. Uh, I've been in the technology space for over a decade. I've managed uh, programming teams, developed web and mobile platforms, as well as been involved with numerous startups. As an elite endurance athlete, uh, WildFit Gyms is extremely exciting because it combines two of my greatest passions, fitness and technology. WildFit Gyms created an integrated solution for cities. For city parks with existing outdoor gym equipment, we created a software platform that turns the old stations into smart stations. And for outdoor parks, uh, city parks without outdoor gym equipment, we created the WildFit Gym based on functional, high intensity fitness that is CrossFit compatible. The WildFit Gym solution centers around our Wild Trainer system, which utilizes our mobile application along with our complementary web platform to deliver daily outdoor workouts with real-time performance feedback, the ability to invite and challenge friends and others with social media integration, unlock rewards and prizes from our local advertising partners, all while creating a community of outdoor fitness enthusiasts. I designed our equipment from the ground up to be perfectly compatible with CrossFit and other forms of high intensity interval training. In 2007, I was a wilderness ranger. I lived in the wild for three months and to keep up with my CrossFit workouts, I built a gym out of what I could find around me. So I did pull-ups on tree branches, we added the pull-up bar. I took a rope, threw it over that same branch, did rope climbs, thus the rope. I did push-ups in the dirt dips on logs and rocks, which was great, but our rings offer what I think is a better uh, solution for that. Our equipment is scalable so that anyone can do our workouts. An elite athlete or a mom that just dropped her kids off at the park can work out side by side. And this community aspect is really what has made CrossFit so successful. They offer a community and a competitive environment that supports people through these high intensity workouts. Anyone can do our workouts, and we, we picture this going nationwide. The market potential is huge. There's over 20,000 city parks in the 100 largest US cities alone. So this represents, in, in addition, there are 15,000 outdoor gyms already in the ground. That represents over $100 million of investment. The CrossFit community is huge. It's, exploding in the, it's exploded in the last, past few years. There are an estimated 250,000 current CrossFitters 
with an additional 5,000 members joining each week. We built this business around a multi-customer interconnected business model. Revenue streams come from each of our customers, cities, users, and advertisers. Cities with existing equipment pay for our software package installation and ongoing access to the platform. Cities without gym equipment buy our WildFit gym and also pay for access to the web and app platform. Users can use our mobile app and web platform for free, but they pay for premium features. And advertisers pay us for the opportunity to offer rewards to our users. These revenue streams fuel our projected financials. In year three, we'll have over $7 million in sales, with that growing to over $20 million in our fifth year. And I want to point out that these financials are based on conservative estimates of selling five WildFit gyms year one, 20 in year two, and 100 in year three. And also based on selling 40 software platforms in year one, 200 in year two, and only 1,000 in year three. So with that being said, I'd love to give a demonstration of how our system works. So I've just arrived at my local WildFit gym. So using my smartphone, all I'm going to do is just simply scan the QR code adjacent to the equipment to view the daily outdoor workout. So from here, I can actually do the workout by myself. I can invite friends or others to join me, or I can even offer a challenge. The great thing about our app and the equipment is that it's completely scalable, so we'll be able to offer beginner, intermediate, and advanced level workouts, which we'd like to demonstrate now. So after each exercise, all I have to simply do is enter the amount of reps or stop the timer to move on to the next exercise. After your entire workout's complete, you'll actually be giving a workout summary with your stats along with how you rank with others in your area. So after a spirited workout and most likely a shower, um, <laughs> what's great then to, to enjoy a tasty snack or a frosty beer from one of our local advertising partners? We have our first customers. We recently met with the City of Fort Collins Park Planning Departments, and they want to stall our software package at four city park locations in the next few months. In addition, we've been, we've been working closely with the city of Walnut Creek in California. They want to rip out the signage at their existing exercise stations, replace it with our package, in addition to installing our WildFit gym this upcoming May. Our users are active, engaged, motivated individuals who are going to bring business to the companies that advertise with us. We've also built strong partnerships to help fuel our success. We're working with the Rocky Mountain Innosphere in Fort Collins. We're also part of a year-long venture accelerator at Colorado State University. We met with a manufacturer in Denver last week called Rage Fitness, part of Gibson Athletics. And the head of business development loved our prototype, and he's presenting uh, our package to his executive board today. We also don't just consider the city of Fort Collins as our first customer but really also as a partner, because they're willing to work with us to design the best solution. We know that we will be successful. We have our first customers identified, we have strong partnerships, we have our prototype built, and we have our mobile app under development. But in order to launch our beta test in these next two months, we need $35,000. We've pooled together $10,000 of our own personal funds 
and we look to you to invest the remaining 25,000. With this money, we can complete the first version of our app, finish design of our equipment that will go in the ground this May, and launch our beta program in five parks in California and Colorado. Furthermore, the returns will be high, but also you have the opportunity to help us inspire communities to live healthier and happier. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This is the uh, point in time where we ask our judges to go over and work out for just a couple of minutes. If not, I guess we'll... You were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will open it up for questions now. Who would like to go first? I'll go ahead. Um, just one comment that I observe. The uh, financials that you represent in your business plan are different from your deck there. I would probably you know, fix that for future presentations. And then I have a question uh, relative to your, your revenue growth, which looks you know, fairly steep in year three, pretty radical. Uh, in, in particular, relative to the amount of cost that you think you're going to have to put into it, as well as your advertising expense looks light relative to the number of users that you probably want to go out and get. So I'd just like to hear your thoughts on, on each of those, if you, if you could. Sure. Um, so our financials are different because our business model has evolved. And the reason it evolved is because we've been talking to actual customers. So when we met with the city of Fort Collins, they were extremely excited about the equipment. They understand, yeah, the old equipment, you know, no one's using it. Your equipment sounds awesome. They get the, how popular CrossFit is. And down the road, uh, they want to buy it. But today, and what they were extremely excited about, was being able to make their old equipment that they already bought relevant again, make, get people to use it. So that's when we modified our business model around not only selling a software package with our equipment, but also offering it to our competitors' equipment or for parks with no equipment at all. Um, in regards to our growth, um, and then in kind of the, the uh, our expenses kind of remaining low. I think what's beauty about our business model is that once we get the infrastructure in place, so we have the manufacturing partnership, we have an app and web uh, platform built, we can ramp up and bring on hundreds of thousands of users without having that high of a variable cost to add each additional user, almost nothing. So that's kind of the beauty of this integration uh, of the, the equipment as well as the software platform. Um, and what, what will fuel our growth in year three is bringing on, uh, you know, having a, a full team by then, a, a sales force, uh, an, an app and web team. Um, yeah. Very good. Next question. A question about selling into the, the municipal market. Um, you've been working, you live in Fort Collins, have connections, uh, even so you're close to that situation get to know the people, how in the world, I think it's very difficult to sell, you gotta have RFPs, you know, you gotta have competitive bids, you know, the usual municipal selling process. How, how are you gonna overcome that? Um, fantastic question. Uh, basically, um, we definitely have realized the fact that, you know, generally with most municipalities, they have about a five to $10,000 limit before you would actually have to go through the RFP, RFQ process. So what we're actually proposing is that we're working already with a company, local company in Fort Collins called Community Funded. And uh, basically, it's a crowdfunding website, essentially. So what we'd essentially like to do with a lot of communities around the nation, basically, is look to the communities to actually supplement some of that cost, uh, because this is really going to be for them, um, you know, whether it be out of the tax dollars or out of their pockets directly. So uh, crowdfunding uh, and community funded in itself has been really, really popular over the last uh, couple of years. So we really look to that uh, to uh, supplement a lot of the costs for the cities. Um, so what we found uh, from talking to the cities is that anything under $5,000 a, a single person can kind of make the approval. So installing our, our software application and the signs is something that one person in Fort Collins can say yes or no about. So that's our way in. 
And then the, the beauty of this model is that we're building the relationship, and this is part of our strategy and why we, we evolved it. Because we're building that relationship, we get in, and then uh, they understand our value, they get to know us, so when they are ready to invest in new equipment, they're gonna come to us. So my question is really about competition. I saw in your business plan, you've got a number of major competitors in this space. They've been selling to these cities, they have relationships already. And you know what you just said, 5,000 times the 20,000 uh, existing places, you've got a, uh, let's do the math here, right? You have a $100 million opportunity just to go sell your app and your signs to these people and not be competitive with the other people building structures. So have you thought about really focusing on, I love the app, I love the interactivity, get people going, get them excited, love the CrossFit tie-in, uh, obviously a huge success. I think 250 sounds low, 250,000 of them, because <laughs> I know a lot of them. Yeah. I, I'm not one of them, but um, yeah. I should be. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested if you guys have really thought about, to me, this is your differentiator over here. It's the signage, the app, and the equipment. That's kind of cool, but when the three of you guys were on it, it was kind of, <laughs> and it just, I'm thinking about competition. You know, if you did this, then you could partner with those other guys. And it, you get this incremental sale, five or 10 grand, you know, way lower bar in terms of the RFP process. What do you think about that? Yeah, and so that's kind of, that's what we've really discovered as we've been approaching these cities is um, the cost, obviously the cost of the full setup is an issue. Um, but, but I believe is, um, I'm a CrossFit coach, and as I said, strength and conditioning specialist, that our setup really caters to the emerging trend in fitness. It's only gonna continue to grow with Growth of, growth of CrossFit, so, um, and city parks I think recognize that, that these other companies producing equipment that is mainly based around machinery, that it, it's really, it's one dimensional. You can only do one movement on that, and so um, our value, I believe, is greater with the equipment, but as we said, the, the app integration is really our differentiator, so that's why we wanna have that, that package where it parks with the existing equipment, we have our software package, and that seems to something like that can be sold and done instantly instead of going through that sales cycle. Is that, yeah. Judges, any more questions? We'll open it up to the audience then, if uh, any of you all have a question. Yes. So I think we all agree that there's a need to upgrade the systems that are currently in place in the parks. My question is, what research have you done into the actual demand from the consumers of the product, specifically the people who live in the cities, who would actually be willing to use these products? Is there a demand for it? Um, and there is a differentiation between those who do CrossFit and those who have a demand for working out in a park. Yeah, so th I hung out, actually, there's a, a uh, the city of Walnut Creek in California, I, I hung out at this park, Heather Farms, and just approached people. At, they have some really old fitness equipment and approached them and said, hey, you know, we're building this gym. Is this something you'd be interested in? Oh, yeah. They, everyone we've talked to about it loves it. That's within the CrossFit community and then folks that are doing whatever they may be doing. Um, in addition, there's, people are seeing these CrossFit gyms in parks um, in Fort Collins. There's, there's um, near the, there's, people flipping tires, running around, rolling in the dirt. And that, I think that's getting people excited and really um, making this more of a mainstream movement rather than the garage scene it really started in. Anyone else want to add anything? Okay, <clears throat> let me get over here. So uh, for this specific product, do you guys have a patent out or patent pending for it? Not for this specific product. We, um, as we mentioned, we met with Rage Fitness in Denver who makes equipment for CrossFit. And we agree that there's nothing necessarily proprietary about the setup and what, what's really attractive and what they found value in is our concept that, that we're all about being outdoor and the outdoor fitness. So um, as far as the actual equipment, there's nothing proprietary, but that's something we have all kinds of crazy ideas of stuff we'd like to do um, as far as equipment manufacturing down the road. So that's something we'd look into, definitely. Back to the technology for just a minute. I mean, ha have you looked at other markets that would be able to use your apps, not just on the CrossFit side, but 
you know, on the inside gym side as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And that's really where a lot of the accelerometer, accelerometer integration is really going to come into play too, is to be able to track those results in numerous types of environments, basically. So, um, you know, the, going back to the application, um, basically that, you know, the popularity of, there, there's one application that's extremely popular in the uh, exercise space right now, and that's called Strava. Um, Strava has grown to, I believe, over 10 million users. It is an enormous application out there. And the great thing about Strava, and kind of going back to your question, actually, in terms of the growth, is that, <coughs> They've utilized social media perfectly to be able to grow their product. Um, they essentially, there's this uh, thing called kind of like bragging, basically, about your workout. So, uh, you know, when you finish a, uh, a ride, basically, it publishes to your Facebook profile. So, uh, utilizing those same sort of techniques, we definitely want to utilize our app to not just be, you know, CrossFit per se, but yeah, to be a lot of, to encompass a lot of other types of exercises. I mean, really, your fitness lifestyle. Very good. Any other uh, questions from our audience? Yeah, cut that out right here. So in looking at the equipment, it looks, it looks great. Have you considered liability issues and people getting injured and how you handle that? Yeah, it's funny. That's actually what gets brought up, brought up the most when we talk about this. And so Rage Fitness, who we met with in Denver, they, they meet the industry standards. So their, their manufacturing processes would, would cover us. And as far as city parks, um, it would have to be if that thing collapsed and someone got hurt, then it would come back to us as far as um, folks using it and maybe falling and breaking an arm. That would, we don't see that being an issue. Questions over here, yes. So from here we can uh, see the Odell's logo on your app. Is that an existing partnership or is that something that you wanna pursue? Um, that's actually a potential partnership. Uh, I've already been speaking to them. Uh, we've, we've been speaking to numerous uh, local advertising partners, at least in the Fort Collins area. But uh, the uh, possibilities really are endless from the corner store, uh, the, you know, the locally owned uh, mom and pop corner store, all the way to like a nationwide um, natural grocer for that matter. So, or athletics equipment manufacturer. So. Okay, good. Was there one more question over here? Thank you. Um, you guys refer back to CrossFit quite a bit. Um, from the position that I'm standing in, it looks like you guys are going to be a bigger competitor to CrossFit more than a kind of partnership. Um, in what way are you going to motivate people to use this type of equipment or the equipment um, that's already existing in your app versus signing up and going to a CrossFit gym where there are trainers there that can critique everything that you do so you can get the most out of your workout? I think. The, the cost is obviously a huge issue, right? So gym memberships can be very expensive. So this is a free opportunity, whether you use the app or not. Um, and as far as a competition, I think that's debatable because I think this is something that CrossFit gyms could buy. The, this is kind of that all-in-one package that doesn't necessarily really exist yet. So, um, and again, it's like people, it's that, we're all about the outdoor fitness side. So there's people running around in parking lots. Why wouldn't they want something outside to work out on? And that, and that can be extended to um, the kind of globo gym uh, industry, right? So 24-hour fitness, hotels, they have that room, that box with the treadmill that no one uses. Why not have something outside when it's sunny and beautiful out? Um, colleges and universities. I mean, I think there's a much, much broader market than just municipalities. And I think we're actually complementary to CrossFit realistically that, you know, um, our equipment and application, um, there's nothing proprietary about the programs that we're necessarily going to be doing, but it's just more the system that we're going to be, you know, kind of layering on top of that. Um, you know, the thing is, you know, uh, people do pay a lot for gym memberships and they pay a lot more even for those, uh, you know, CrossFit classes. But once they get a lot of that instruction, uh, they can go out and, you know, enjoy the sunshine rather than be cooped up in the gym a lot of the time. What about in the winter? Yeah, we, that's, that gets brought up a lot as well. Um, so I went to Minnesota this past June, and um, it was beautiful. And everyone's out running around the lakes. There's parks. It's green. It's everywhere. It's, and so those, those northern states, and here included, where it is colder in the winter, I still think there's value for that um, other part of the season. 
And for actual winter use, um, as we said, David lives across from City Park, and um, folks do use it. I used it actually not too long ago, and um, we've actually considered adding a, um, a solar power heater that would heat the bars to satisfy that, those cold mornings. And those Minnesotans, you know, they're crazy. Any other questions from our audience? Uh, judges, anything else before we wrap up? Uh, what prevents CrossFit from taking your idea and running with it? They've already got the brand, and you guys are pairing yourself. You know, have you prepared yourself for that thought? Um, I think that's a, definitely a concern. I think at this stage, we're, we're able to move fast, and, and that's what we're doing. So we want to get to the market quick. I think CrossFit is busy growing exponentially. So they're adding users. They're, they have a successful business, and, and that's what I think they're focusing on. Um, do they want to become an equipment manufacturer? Well, what they've been doing since up to today is, is working with, with other companies like Rage Fitness who manufacture equipment specifically for CrossFit. So um, it, it, it's, it's always a threat, but I, I think uh, we positioned ourselves in a way that we, we can uh, do something that CrossFit maybe can't do better than us. Very good. Dan, David, Desmond, give them a round of applause. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job, gentlemen. We're going to take about a 20-minute break, and we'll have our final presentation uh, for the afternoon. So come on back. Thank you.